So I want to start with why do academics even bother working with industry? And this is a survey from the UK. I'm an academic. I feel obliged to present some research. And 1,500 academics were asked from a potential sample of 4,000 why they work with industry. And the top reasons are number one applicability of research, which is my research will go out to the world. It'll make a difference in the world. And the second two are money. Money for their research projects. And as we come down the list, we come to sort of things that industry can offer the academic. So that's information and feedback, access to materials, that kind of thing. Then as we come even further down, there's some of the uh, sort of networking and expertise things. And look at this. The most uh, insignificant thing, 16% and 11%, are personal income and the wish to protect intellectual property and patent. So the strongest motivator is to give research meaningful impact and the second most important motivator is to get money, not personally inter interestingly, but money for research. And just to give you a sense of the scale of that, Uni Services, where I'm from, facilitates $100 million every year of research into academics' pockets. So that just gives you an idea of the scale. So I've got quite a number of cartoons. Uh, this is my first cartoon. Here's our old scientific method. It's formulate a hypothesis, accumulate data, do extensive experimentation. And here's the challenge. The new scientific method is formulate a hypothesis, patent it, and raise $17 million. And what we see here is the sense of a paradigm shift, that the way that we think about research traditionally and the way that the commercial world thinks about research represents this paradigm shift. Thinking about the motivation for academics. And when you write a grant for the academics, what you do is you try and extend yourself a bit. And, and this isn't from one of my grants, but I have had grants similar to this. And you get a reviewer back that says, while the application has merit, it lacks novelty and the ability to extend the field. And in a way, in grant writing and academic research, we're rewarded for taking what's known and moving beyond it, speculating about what might be possible, being a bit ambitious, and even including things that might never work out. And the outcome at the end of the grant is you hope you get some publications, uh, and you might have to write a report to the granting agency. Now, business values the same things. Uh, they're interested in innovation and new ideas and advancement, but it thinks quite differently about uncertainty and the possibility of non-delivery. Because the outcome for a company might be that someone gets fired or the company fails. So there's a difference in attitude, and this leads us into the sense of there being a cultural divide between the two. And here's a cartoon that says, oh, I forgot to mention the cultural gap you have to leave, leap, and there are a lot of academics at the bottom of that pit. All right, so here it is in summary. You've got to communicate this value concept. That's not just the money. You have to be valuable in yourself, and you have to deliver value. And here's a quote from Warren Buffett that says, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Now, I've written a few grants that have used uh, this strategy. Living at risk is jumping off the cliff and building your wings on the way down. But this is not how business operates. Research is uh, what I'm doing when I don't know what I'm doing. So there's this concept of uncertainty in research. That is, you can say, well, I don't know what the results are going to be. It could be this, it could be that. And sometimes that gets in the way of a commercial negotiation. But the way around this is that the outcome might be in doubt. That is, we don't know if the drug will be uh, good or bad, but the process we're going to follow, that is what we're going to do, should not be. So we need absolute clarity about that process. Business people negotiate all the time. In fact, we all negotiate all the time. Uh, we negotiate with our children, we negotiate with our friends, we do spend a lot of our time negotiating it. But business people are really good at it. And to give you an idea of the scale, Uniservices negotiates and transacts a, a contract an hour. So every hour of every working day of this year, another contract will be negotiated at Uniservices.
And so they will negotiate because that's how the game is played in the business world. Now it's not played quite so explicitly in the academic world. And academics generally have a bit less experience uh, in this regard, and in my experience at least, um, they tend to reflect two basic uh, scenarios. And the first of those scenarios is that the non-financial benefits to the academic, that is the PhD student that they might get, the publication they get, the interest in the project, the non-financial benefits are so compelling that they'll do the work for free. And I've been in meetings where people have said, look, I'll just do it for free. And the second scenario, interestingly, is at the other end of the scale, and that is where the valuation of the idea, if it's a piece of intellectual property, uh, or the consulting, is overinflated. And this comes from the academic value of the idea being very high, uh, new, leading, publishable versus the true commercial value, remember that word value, um, to the company. So what you should do is uh, meet with someone from the contracts team, uh, discuss what you want, create a strategy, and they'll help lead and guide the business negotiation. And always remember, if the discussion goes out of your area of expertise, there may be plenty of other people uh, in the university that would be able to provide that. All right, what about conflict? And so here's a, a cartoon that says you're completely free to carry out whatever research you want so long as you come to these conclusions. Knowledge is valuable. That's what academics have. That's what we're selling. And that's what the company's paying for. Some projects aren't the least bit uh, confidential, so there's no problem, and that'll be embodied in the contract. But the entire commercial value of a contract can be lost if you talk about it at a poster or a conference, and that could lead to the uh, client reasonably wanting their money back. Now, there's no problem with publishing, um, but it should be after any patents or protections are filed. And interestingly, uh, for those of you who don't know, patents do count for PBRF. And non-disclosure agreements are commonly used so that there is protection in a meeting for everything that you say. Intellectual property is important. We need to keep it confidential. We need to get patents in place. And, in, uh, and as an extension of that, there needs to be a degree of mutual respect. So business is interested in an academic as a person as much as their knowledge. So typically academics think that what the client is after is what does the person know? And that's important, but who the person is and what they're like is actually pretty important. And the things that they're worried about is, can I work with you? Will they be okay in front of the media? Will they fit in with our staff? And can I trust them? They'll assume that you know your field, uh, but you should assume that they know their industry. And it is a knowledge partnership. Uh, it doesn't work well when someone comes in and says, I know everything about what you need to know here. I'm a big expert, I'm going to write a report, here it is. It is a partnership. You have to engage with the people and work with people in the company. Always act in an ethical, moral and respectful way. And be brief. Most of uh, what needs to be said can be said relatively quickly. And it's important to separate the commercial and technical discussions. So a commercial discussion is the negotiating, the money, the time, the IP, the intellectual property. But the other technical discussion probably will occur in a different forum. So the commercial discussion will happen with a, a manager of some sort, and the technical discussion will happen with people who are skilled uh, in the company in the area that you're talking about. And listen, listen, and listen. Uh, don't let it throw you. It's just a negotiating tactic. It's teamwork, really important. The team includes the company as well as your own team here at the university. Try to be like Mary. Mary's a real team player. And here's a cartoon that I quite like <laughs> that exemplifies the nature uh, of teamwork. And you have to think of yourself as one of these teams. All right, here's my summary. First thing, I hope I can give you some glimpse that working with business is a great opportunity. It's not for everyone, but for those that do, um, it provides that ability to get your research into the real world. It does provide some funding for your research. And during the time that I've been talking, UniServices has provided $50,000 of funding into the research environment here at the university.
And this is the best way of your research having that impact in the world. There is this cultural divide between the academic world and the business world, and you never really understand a person until you consider things from their point of view, until you climb inside their skin and walk around it. And that's Harper Lee, to kill a mockingbird. Really try and understand things from the company's side. This value idea. Communicate value, be valuable, and deliver value. Albert Einstein, try not to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. Have a plan and think about what might go wrong. Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. And there's an element of truth in that, that if uh, everything's going fine, that's great, but you need to have a plan when things go wrong. Let our advanced worrying become advanced thinking and planning Churchill. Get expert help with negotiation and conflict. During a negotiation, don't take things personally, and you'll be able to see opportunities more objectively, Brian Coslow. Confidentiality is not negotiable. And finally, respect credibility and reputation. Credibility is someone else's idea of what I should be doing. It's not personal, it's just business. Uni services, we aim to make things happen.